what's going on guys? This is Dan from O'Neill Brothers Racing. Just answering a question that we get here very often um, is how to break in your engine and how to tune it. Break in is very important when it comes to buying a new engine from us. Uh, it's not very hard to do. Uh, just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of fuel, and in no time your motor will be up to par. Hope this video helps. Watch it as many times as you need. All right, we're gonna start off with a little bit of tuning. As you see, I got three carburetors here, all right? I got a WT668, a WT813, and a WT990. The WT668 probably looks pretty familiar. It's the car that you get with any stock car. Um, the OCs, HBIs, MCDs, FGs, uh, Rampages, so forth and so on. The WT990 is the carburetor that you receive when you buy engines from us. It is is the WT990. I have the 813 out just because it is another common carburetor that we, we run into. It has an accelerator pump in it, so it is a little bit trickier to tune, but I pulled it out just to show you. Now on all these carburetors, they all have the same adjustments. They have a low needle, which is closest to the engine, a high needle, which is farthest away from the engine, and then you have your idle screw. All your idle screw is, is a tapered bolt on a spring that opens or closes your throttle hammer. And why what that does, it allows more air into your motor or not. Usually you mess with this once you get the motor running. But we're going to start with the, with the low and high speed. Your low needle your low needle controls more of a more it's more of an idle mixture screw okay it pumps the same amount of fuel all the time every time your high needle is really where most of the tuning is done once you hit about a third of throttle which is about right there your high speed needle starts kicking in and dumping fuel so always have that in mind when you tune when you start tuning on a 668 carburetor you want to close the needles all the way till they stop. Don't tighten them. If you tighten these things too much, you can break the needle inside in the jetting, which will cause the carb to run erratic. On the carb tuning for a 668, it's one and a quarter turns out on the low needle and one and a half turns out on the high. And when I mean one and a half and one and a quarter, that's what I mean, one full rotation is one turn, not a half rotation. A quarter turn, you want to look at this as being like a pie. On the high needle, it's one and a half. So we go one, two, that's a full turn. And then a half a turn, which is a half turn. Okay? That is stock settings for a 668 carburetor. That's where you should start. Your idle screw, I love, what I like to do is I like to maybe pinch it in a little bit just to get it started. So when it gets started and it seems like it has a high idle, I go ahead and just back it down until it has that nice smooth pop to it. Okay. Now another frequently asked question is, is why don't these carbs have chokes? Well, they're high performance carbs. They have a little bit bigger bore and jetting in them they don't need a choke and you honestly don't need a choke to start an engine the 668 carburetor has a choke it's very nice to have it but I'm going to show you a trick how to do it without these okay without a choke I'm going to show you on this now the A13 and 990 as far as carb tuning wise they're very similar to each other what we'll do on a 990 is one in an eighth turns so we'll go ahead and we'll zero this out. We'll go one, two, which is one, one turn, and an eighth of a turn with the H, an eighth is half of a quarter. So, and another way I'll describe it to people is called a pitch. So just a pinch, just like that, okay? On the high end needle, same thing. You wanna zero them out just so they stop. You wanna go one and five eighths. So it's one, one and five eighths is, a pinch past one and a half, just like you would on the 668. So you go one, two, that's one full turn, another half turn, and then a pinch past that. That's one and five eighths, okay? That's where we tell people the start on a 990. 
Now an A13 is very similar. The only difference is the low screw. We only do one turn out on the low. So just one full rotation and you're good. No pinch. The 990 and A13 are very similar to each other, only the difference is that the A13 has this thing called an accelerator pump. When it gets to a third of a th uh, throttle, you'll see that this jet in here is called a waterfall jet. You can actually see it drip, a whole drip of gas come through this carburetor. It's, it, this carburetor is great for high speed guys, guys that are doing uh, you know maybe long drag racing or top speed because it has that big fuel delivery dump on the top end. I wouldn't suggest it for guys running track, bashing, or just having fun. Guys that are looking for torque, not the best carb. These two carbs are going to be better for bashing, track running, and just overall general use. Okay. Carb tuning, you want to take it slow and easy. No, no quarter turns at a time. Sixteenth of a turn, maybe an eighth of a turn at the most. You can see uh, carb tuning is very, you know, on the dyno we'll see huge variances in just a, an eighth or a sixteenth of a turn on the high needle. You know, that's almost, it can almost lead up to a half horsepower gain. So make sure you're very conscious on what carburetor you have and where your tuning is at all the time. It will not, A, it will A, give you better performance and B, save your motor from seizing. Okay? Okay. Another frequently asked question here is what kind of oil and ratio you want to use. Now, there's a lot of different style oils out there, all right? We always suggest to use a dirt bike grade oil. You want to look at our engines as being mini dirt bike motors than they are weed whacker engines. So going down to your local Home Depot or garden supply store, is that stuff's not going to cut it. You want to go to a, like a performance shop, dirt bike shop, anywhere that sells anything for two-stroke dirt bikes, and get a dirt bike grade oil. We suggest the Caster 927, Yamalu, or Honda HP2. Those are our three top picks here, and we run them at 28 to 1. They also add these dirt bike shops, they sell something called a ratio right cup. It looks just like this. On the one side it has gallons, and how many gallons you have, and all the ratios so you can't screw it up. All right, You find that 28 to 1, you fill it up, you pour it in your tank, you're ready to go. There's a lot of premix fuels out there. Um, there's a lot of additives. We always suggest to run a clean, you know, a clean mixture, which means just oil and fuel together. If you're running methanol or any kind of funky fuels like 110 or C12 or Q16, you can always give us a call. We'll give you a little more in depth of what kind of oil to run and uh, yeah, and uh, how to break those in. But for production engines, guys are running 93 to, to 100 octane. 28 to 1, Caster 927, Honda HP2, or Yamalu, our top three. And also, no hobby store oils. All right, we're out here outside beautiful Southern California. I'm going to show you guys how to break in a motor, okay? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my carburetor. Now, I'm running a WT668, so earlier in the video, I described a where to go, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start my low needle. I'm going to zero it out. I'm going to go out one, two, and quarter. Okay? On the high, I'm going to zero it out. One, two, and a half. One and a half turns on the high, one and a quarter on the low. Pretty simple, okay? I'm going to start to get the car turned on. Make sure your fell safe set and all that good jazz. Now the cool thing about this carb, it does have a choke, but I'm gonna show you that you don't need a choke to start a car. All right. Now, some guys will come over here and they just go, they just crank the crap out of this thing and that's not the way to do it. First, you'll break your pull start and you'll flood your engine. A trick that I use, I put my knee on the tire first so I, the car is not gonna go anywhere. What I do is I give it a couple cranks just real slow, like that, just to pull some gas through the carburetor. Also prime it, forgot to tell you, prime your bulb. Always prime your bulb. Make sure, make sure it primes up. One other thing about priming your bulb, priming your bulb does not put gas in your engine. Every time you pull, 
your pull start, you're putting gas in your engine. All a primer bulb does is stage gas. All it does is build ga gas line pressure. That's all it does, okay? Back to starting. So I gave it a couple pulls. I know there's some gas getting through here now. So now what I do is I pull on, and I just pull it real slow until I feel it get tight. See how it stopped? Now I just want to just barely get the piston over top dead center. So when I pull it, it swings and comes back up and pops. So here we go. We're gonna get just past, there's top dead. Sounds pretty good. Maybe do it again. Maybe do it again. Hear it? It's starting to start. Oh, it's almost there. There you go. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you a, a situation that happens to a lot of guys. That started up pretty easy. About four poles. No worries. We don't design engines that take about 20 poles to start an engine. Okay. So if you can't get this thing started when the, within the first five or six poles, stop. Don't keep pulling it. All you're going to do is flood it. So say you're going like this. Say it's just doing that. It doesn't want to idle. All right. Best thing to do, bump your idle screw up a little bit. That's all you need to do. Give it a couple turns. And it stays idling. Okay. Don't be afraid to adjust your idle screw. That's going to help out a lot. Now that we got this thing started, now we're going to we're going to drive it. Most of the time what we'll have you do is sit here and let it idle for about 10 to 15 minutes when it's a brand new engine. Let it you know, let it run and what you're doing is you're letting the motor heat cycle, you're letting the motor soak some heat in there, let it expand, let it move around, do its thing, all right? And treating the metal. Once it's cooled and shut down, you shut it down, let it cool all the way down. Now we're going to go and start again. Now we're going to start driving it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it. I want you guys to drive your car very slow, like this. For the first, for about 10 to 15 minutes, drive your car real slow, just like this. Very slow, no more than half throttle. What you're doing is you're allowing the motor to clear out and you're allowing, them, allowing it to gain a little bit of heat and get a little more CFM from the, from the flywheel, okay? After about 15 minutes of that, I would shut it let down again let it cool all the way down, okay? Now, every time you do this, let it cool all the way down. What you're doing is you're letting all that heat, with it being expanded like this, coming back down. And the more and more you can do that, the better it is for your engine and your cylinder, okay? So, let it cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and start her up again. So, I want you to start driving a little bit harder. Just like that, nice and slow. Roll on and off the throttle. Now your motor is almost broken in. This last cycle, I want you to start running it almost as hard as you would. So let's go ahead and run it, then we'll get into a little bit of tuning, okay?
looking pretty good. So that's pretty much braking. You do that real slow, your motor should be just fine. And that goes for any engine. A pro stock track engine to a high torque 30.5 recase engine. It's all the same. Now we're going to talk a little bit about tuning. Okay, now you're through braking. And there's a lot of guys out there that like to find that edge which we call the edge, that's the peak performance of the, of the car. So I'm gonna rich in this high needle, okay, which most of your tuning is always right here. Some of it's down here, but one and a quarter for this car is working pretty good. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna rich in this up a little bit because I wanna find that fine tune. I wanna get that snap. So I always rich in first, give it about an eighth turn riching. Let's run it again and let's see what it, what it sounds like. Hear that gurgle sound in the car? That's telling you that the car is rich. Here it sounds like it's underwater. So we're going to bring her back in. Now the car is rich. I don't want it that rich. Sounds like crap. Alright, so what I'm going to do is going to go in here. I'm going to give it a pinch. See that? I went from here to here. You want to make sure that when you, when you tune, it's in very small increments. Everybody's trying to squeeze to get more power. There's a myth out there that says that you lean the engine, you get more power. That's not true. Half the time, richening the engine will give you power. In this case, Right now we need, you know, right now we're tuned, but I want you guys to listen to what a motor sounds like when it's too lean, right before it seizes. This is a little bit tricky, I don't like doing this, but for your guys' sake, I'm gonna do it, all right? So now I'm in tune, I'm gonna lean it more. And what I want you to listen for is a popping noise, all right? Okay, I leaned out the engine. I want you guys to watch and listen to the way the motor reacts. I'm a little nervous, but I can always build another one. Here we go. See how it's popping and planing? What's happening is the motor is what we call drying out. That means it's not getting enough fuel. This thing, if you ran it hard for a couple minutes, I'd probably end up seizing it. Let's go back to the car. Watch how richening the car helps the performance. Now watch this. Now she's way faster. depth information you can always give us a call or email us at info at no brothers i really hope this helped guys and uh, have some fun out there this is dan and i'll talk to you guys later